really appreciate being uh, invited here by Design March and to have the first chance to visit Reykjavik. Um, we look forward. We only arrived late last night, um, and we worked on this late last night. Un un unfortunately, like Ingel, with, uh, with seeing um, Maya and Nick with the vegetable thinking and Juliet's analysis of uh, exhibition <laughs> and design, um, we feel slightly underprepared. We're a bit Luddite in what we do. We're just very busy on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, <laughs> What we do, our life is our work, our work is our life, our family is our life, our friends are our, our colleagues that work with us. We, we, it's uh, the most magi uh, magical thing that I think has happened is actually you've got Wakako out of South London, <laughs> which is uh, an incredibly rare occurrence, so that's my trick. <laughs> um, and wax has got something to actually say about magic um, when we go into the slides. So what we're showing you, I'll just flick through this video's done with... Um, with Show Studio in 2005, at the very beginning of fashion film, we worked with about maybe sort of eight or nine different um, art editors, photographers, filmmakers, very, various different things. They were placed on buses, on aeroplanes, uh, just preempting Fashion Week in London uh, for the spring summer season, and basically using our prints. Uh, for example, with Laura Scaffarelli, this because she was in Miami, we sent two pairs of pants because it was the cheapest way to get some print to her in Miami. Uh, she got two girls to jump in a garden with our pants on, put a, a tights over her lens and produce this film for us. Um, so there's, there's, there's a, we're, we're, we're kind of master of collaborations. <coughs> the collaboration is, is started by me and Matt Wack meeting in New York and then I think it was so easy to collaborate after that. So um, I'll, I'll finish this DVD and get onto the PowerPoint which is all very trendy. If I can find it, yeah, there it is. There we go, PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> <laughs> wow, here we go. So we, we called this Patterns, Codes, etc. Because <laughs> we couldn't come up with a good, better name quick enough. And that was half six <laughs> yesterday. They were calling us in London. <laughs> <laughs> so we go, over to you, Wack. Okay. Um, we encounter so many moments that we think, oh my God, that's so magic, that's so incredible. How the hell did it work out? But um, one of the um, biggest magic moments, I feel personally, as a doer, as a creator, is that the moment of when you, one second ago, you didn't have anything, you just kind of hung on, and then something comes. And then it just goes through the process of finalizing into the design of the surface pattern, which is, um, this is the beginning of it. And then this is going to end product of Vic... Prion's daughter. <laughs> which Vic is the recent collaboration I'm a, I'm a with them. Tennis. I've been practicing with the backstage <laughs> lady, and I still don't think I've got it right. Yes. Vic Prion's okay. daughter. Okay, there okay. You go. I can get so it from the nothing, or maybe just the idea of one square, and on Sunday afternoon you're just scratching and doodling at the back of a newspaper, and the creating pattern in the crossword, and then hmm, that would work, and then create pattern. Maybe this is quite Scandinavian sort of a pattern, and then end up in the, on the surface of clothes, finished garment, done. This is magic. <laughs> <laughs> we, d we, did, um, we did a collection, is it um, Bonnie Bunny's uh, Autumn Winter uh, 08 09? Um, and it was kind of based upon magic as far as I've, the, the story I told, um, which is obviously different from Wax, because um, that's the way it always is, um, is basically this vagabond going around with his, with his suitcase uh, with very sort of hardy, tweedy clothes. Um, going around with his box of magic tricks and fulfilling his desire as a magician to actually let the world know that what's going on within his mind actually allowed itself to communicate through women's clothes. So this is a wax version. Yeah. I mean, this is just an example of maybe the magic can be the theme of a fashion collection itself. So just uh, some visuals here. This is the sketch for the invitation and then also the prints. Um, I'm still a very... Uh, Pen and paper girl. So, um, sketch, pen and paper is probably something that I probably want to keep for the rest of my life. 
So that's the bonnie, the bonnie bunny was kind of the classic bunny out of the hat. Yes. We're, we're, we're very straightforward. We, we just do surface. <laughs> Um, this is tricky sleeves where they got the things up the sleeve, of course. Yeah. And then she's obviously got the gloves to go on with the tricky sleeves things. And she's got the Harlequin print, which is the court jester. And so we don't really give this information across because we try to kind of keep ourselves look a bit more intellectual. But, um. <laughs> but sometimes you can't, you can't answer those uh, journalists' question. Where does your inspiration come from? Magicians. Okay, how intelligent does that sound? <laughs> <laughs> so we keep the yeah, intrigue so, going. Yeah, we kind of stay really mysterious. So um, we're doing, the, obviously, the, 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 it's just a way to build a collection to, to fulfill a two-month period from physical drawing to finish, finish production. We have our own factory in South London where everything you see, apart from the knitwear and maybe the hosiery and shoes and accessories, are done in-house. So we're very much hands-on, and we have a very much craft basis to our ideology. Um, the feathers, of course, like the, the dove flying away, blah, blah, blah. Um, obviously, the, the Dickie Bowie puts on. He's got the tweed trousers still. He's left because he didn't change his trousers yesterday. Um, there you go. So that's, that's that one. And the, the rosettes as well. There's lots of rosettes of celebration. And there's a whole sort of fanfare at the end with his little cape. Um, there you go. That's that one. Um, so then so, we go yeah. on to Jet Set Masala. This was um, a little bit play, the example of um, Jet Set Masala that we're about to show you, some uh, video clip. It's, okay, this is another kind of convoluted one, the mixture of Air Stewardess, um, Bollywood India, and geometric prints. It's mostly, so, it's, all, <laughs> it's, it's all come from like travelling to, to India on, on, on the way to Japan, yeah. as well as our local shop. But sometimes... Again, if you are asked, you will find yourself in a really difficult place, but the easiest thing to say is, why not? So just the, the print experimentation of, what if, if you can't use blue elephant or pink garland, just stick to triangle, circle and square, can you do Bollywood? So that's the sort of... A in Brixton. <laughs> Um, and it, it, so at that time we were kind of playing with catwalk as well, and so we were coming towards the end of our, our catwalk phase because it became a bit monotonous. We, um, just classic sending girls down <laughs> with hair and makeup down a sort of a 20 meter runway. Um, it's all about the pretense of position and competition, and, and also the idea of its our worthiness within the design world. But uh, anyway, we've since 1996 we've um, we've created fashion collections and accessories collections. Um, that's, we were both trained in textiles. I'm a weaver, wax a printer. Um, we started our business in 92. And we soon realized that we needed two people to print over a table. So someone has to get the squeegee and put the ink in and clean the screens. So that's when we joined forces to physically produce stuff. And um, the fashion collection thing is something where we rejuvenate our, our aesthetics or our mindset every, um, every six months. And that allows us to create an entity which is called the archive, where it's kind of within fashion, the archive is okay, it's, it's, it's historical, it becomes referenced for, for magazines and all that kind of stuff. But with us, I, I try to play with this idea that, well, that we've worked quite hard on this. Um, let's kind of try and make it work in the long term. So I think that there are, two, there are different phases. That, um, as I was say, saying earlier, that there is a moment, the kind of designers' kind of intimate moment, that where that nobody knows, that kind of the thinking time, this is a kind of uh, incubating the ideas. But then, at some point, the design becomes public, and then I think this is the example. This is the first time where we, I wanted to. I, I, I don't particularly like fashion myself. I don't like the world it is. I don't like the thing we play within. Obviously, I, I, it, it, was a, it was a task to, to be part of it, but. Um, to try to kind of live within it and be happy within it, as well as be prolific within my desire to work and live. Um, I wanted to experiment and trying to give something a prolonged life beyond the season. So this, this design was just one design I picked out in 2001. Um, and now it has its own identity, has its own lifespan. Uh, unfortunately, because of the success of it and the relationships that we forge with it, is now become an icon within our company and that people perhaps think that's all what we do, just because of its its distribution, its commerce, um, and the people it's touched. Um, so this is Flash. Um, where does it come from, Wack? It's one of the collections 
2000. I know it comes from your head, but where does it come from? Where? Oh, it was, uh, and the, again, from the back of the newspaper doodling. Oh, there you go. Um, so, so um, yeah, it's, it's, it has a flash. It, it, there's people send me pictures of themselves with flash, and it's like it's all over the internet. People take photographs of them with it. So there's this kind of strange celebration of this particular print. And um, because it's asexual, it's very simple. It's a very small file. We kind of lived with the digital revolution. We sort of got on top of that quite quickly and understood that we could send this file around the world to, to different partners, to do different products, um, to satisfy different curiosities. Um, so there, and it had this kind of unisex aspect to it. And also the things it touched were slightly different from the aesthetics or the play that we were doing within our own collections, which are a little bit more guided towards our own physical productions. So it had this kind of form of different market as well. So there was cars, friendships. Every time you see Flash, basically it's like all free gifts for me. So therefore, I, I can't wear the women's clothes. So therefore, I can have the suitcase, I can have the phone cover, I can get the jacket. So the basis of the product, that's credibility in the things that I want in my life. But unfortunately, for the Flash, then everyone thinks I'm a bit of a freak. Um, the Bear Brick, obviously, is Medicom comes to us. We have an office in Japan which helps us. <coughs> Recent West headphones is, again, just commercial relationship. The, the play with the converse was something which was, again, trying to pull it through seasons to allow it to last for 10 years. Um, my desire for cars and racing, um, that's Sarah's car, who actually is one of the, the, the managers of Local Motors in Texas, one of the most sort of smallest independent car companies. Um, my friend Jerome, who does Ruby Helmets, who's my, my motorbike friend. So it, the Flash has a, a, a relationship to me personally that goes way beyond the fact of productivity or commerce. Susie Bubbles, uh, we, we started blogging at the same time, so therefore we've seen her grown up. She's a fan, that's the recent Flash Gnome, which looks after things uh, for us in our last exhibition. Um, a big J-pop star, Meg, who's, on my, who's, who's now on my line, who's sort of texts us the photographs of herself. Um, a film for um, Cinelli and the Bicycle Film Festival. Um, ben Wilson, another motorbike friend who does his pop-out chairs. Uh, Enrico David, a painter who grew up with us, obviously his, 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 his helmet, uh, working with Kimono Breath, a, a beautiful uh, son and daughter set up in Kyoto doing beautiful hand-printed cloth and making kimono and yukatas in uh, traditional ways, taking on the tradition from their, fa um, from their family. Uh, that's a very young Kelly Osborne with the same luggage I came to Iceland with. Um, and the most recent Clark shoes, which seems to be getting a lot of attention now because of possibly our outsiderishness within fashion, as well as Clark's is kind of classic, kind of British comfortable heritage. Um, there's, there's a little bit of a kind of something going on in, in, in the world of other people's ideas of what, why we're together, positive and negative. Um, horse jackets, a little bit Brit British trad going on, and then we dress horses. Which is, which is quite nice, because that's where the horse jacket company comes from. They just do quilted blankets in Suffolk. Um, so that, that's kind of the flash thing. So we're, we're jumping around all the shop. We're not giving you in chronological order. I know it's a bit boring because it's our work. Um, I'd really like you to help us, sort of, if you want to ask questions. Whilst we're going along, it'd be even easier for us, because we don't have to have to talk so much ourselves. But <laughs> if you have, put your hand up, and hopefully someone will give you a mic or even shout. Um, so we're going back right to the beginning now. Um, before we started our own collection, the way we made money in our studio is through, actually, it's obviously, fashion nepotism is true. Um, and it, once you do one thing, then it leads on to the next thing because pr the press eats up stories like nobody knows. Um, and that's perhaps why fashion has this position within the world that we know now within the media, exploitation. Um, so therefore, we were part of that, of course. Um, because we were in it, and we were producing, and we were making aesthetics. Sort of, we were not frightened about putting flowers out there when everyone was dark and deconstructed. Um, so we just had little beautiful, pretty flowers. So we, we had relationships with um, with kind of British houses. We Alexander McQueen was a good friend, graduated with WAC. Um, we moved with him with Givenchy to Europe, and on the back of the things that we did with with Lee, we worked with um, Jill Sander. We worked with. Um, Guy Laroche with Albert Elbaz, um, Tom Ford when he was at Gucci, um, and then obviously Mark Jacobs and when Mark by Mark Jacobs started up. So that was the very beginning of our career where we started to set up a pot of gold 
that we could allow to invest in our own freedom. Um, and this is possibly one of the highlights after working with Mark for three years. Um, this was just after Stephen Sprouse, before Murakami. Obviously, we didn't get as successful as Murakami. Um, so we did about maybe 40 exits out of his 60 ex exits in the Paris Fashion Week. So that's that. Going into another friendship, um, by teaching or working as a professor in Singapore, um, I hooked up with Thesis Chan, who run the Comme des Garçons Gorilla Store then also he has his own company called Work as an art direction company. And he produces this most amazing, it's, it's like a magazine book. It's a thousand editions, yeah. very beautiful hand Graphic printed book. Hand printed book. And um, they give us the opportunity to sum up our lives about two years ago. And we did Work 17 and they, they've all sold out now and it's like they're very precious commodities to us. But we did them, we, we tried to, because we're quite close, we tried to open up our lives of wax background, my background. Um, our process, our collections, our fads, and also the physical techniques. Because we believe that the digital revolution has killed a, a technique that whack holds true to itself. Physically drawing, understanding about pattern repeat, um, and understanding about color separations. Unfortunately, within textiles specifically, with the digital revolutions happened, it's been taught by graphic designers. So therefore, the traditional techniques of, of textiles we see within schools around the world, unfortunately, being lost. So it was our attempt to communicate uh, some kind of formatting of a way that was actually present not so long ago that's actually not been taught properly now. So we had the chance, and that's whack when she was a kid. So we, this was the start of the book, and then we go into just different projects and different things that were going on around at the time. So it's just a, a few double-page spreads. Um, we, like, like, like the introduction, we, we play with architecture, we play with 3D design, we play with environmental coding, um, interiors. Um, all this, all this product's printed in our studio, so therefore, because we've got the, the facility to print, we can print concrete, we can print wood, we can print fabric, we can print plastic, we can print paper, um, whatever, this furniture design for an installation, there's tiles with bizatsa in is a house that we did in, in Cannes for the sort of Cannes Film Festival. The famous tea set, which was done by finding a, a beautiful manufacturer, did whisper mugs, like ch chocolate mugs in Stratford. Um, and, we've got, and, and also we've got a really funny sort of cartoon bunny fan that seems to wear us quite a lot, called Fifi Lapin. So, new project. Yes, new project, we're going big. It's called Building. And it's the tallest building in central London. Um, because of the diversity of what we do, this, people seem to be coming to us now asking us to, to be pattern purveyors within funny projects, which are not fashion, not textiles. And so therefore, we have, we we've come and delivered 17 patterns to a building, and we took the building as our muse. Um, and it's an ongoing project, and, and it's widening and widening and widening as we, as we speak. Um, but the basic delivery was 17 patterns, a women's wear collection, men's wear collection, specifically guided for a campaign to advertise or promote the idea of this building being uh, re-looked at and being changed from commercial to residential, which is center point. A brutalist 60 bit of architecture smack in central London where the crossrail development is, was also we're dealing with all the public space we're dealing with all the environment, interior, exterior, and also doing the advertising for them. So these are the sketches of our interpretation of center point. Some, some, some of the prints are kind of the, the, the direct and uh, deriv derivative and lift from the actual architectural detail of the building itself, where um, that kind of unique detail then is kind of holds and it will still remain. Um, and then also the other part of the print development, which is this is a kind of a concept of central. It's just trying to rival kind of product position. Then we go from big buildings. This is super contemporary. I shouldn't even be showing this because I, I said I shouldn't. But I thought I didn't. <coughs> so you have to delete this from the film and photographs. So from a big building to a very small building of a 95-year-old lady called June who's going blind shed for the Shed of the Year competition for Cuprinol. So it's, um, it's falling down, we pulled the things out, there was a chaise long holding up the front window, so we turned it into a bright shed so she could see it. 
Um, obviously, it's very bright now. It's cut out ivy. <coughs> Um, it's, in five years' time, when the ivy grows through it, then it'll be finished. Um, so that, that, that's, so that, that's the diversity of kind of the, the projects that are current. Um, like we said, there is a narrative that WAC works upon within the collections, the fashion collections, which she's quite shy about, and I forced it out of her just to help me communicate to the journalists and our buying public about what's going on. So the stories are very, are very, very, very basic in terms of their, their narrative and their semantics in terms of the, the relationship of the creativity as well as the actual <laughs> actions and what the actual clothes look like. I guess that in a certain sort of narrative and, and its relationships to patterns, colour, um, the, the whole mood, sometimes it's, it doesn't take a tropical holiday to Hawaii, makes you do a new design. I think it could be a, just a poem or just something you want to create certain character in your collection or just some mood. Um, so we do, we have done this kind of a poem thing per collection. Um, not as a rule, but we have done that quite a lot. And I think it's that kind of signifies that, you know, our way of working quite a lot, I think. And the poem, the poem always comes after at the end because it's never wanting to come out at the beginning. Yeah, because I need to, there's a practical element to it as well, because I, I kind of uh, code in the print name into the poem as well. And the nature of the, of the shed is related to this collection, even though this collection's maybe a year and a half old, <coughs> like the shed is contemporary. So the same play I'm doing with Flash, I'm doing it with lots of other prints now, just to build up the archive. And the, the desire of, 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 and I think the idea of what you brought up, of the first person you mentioned, William Morris, is like, he's my bastion. If I could ever have any, any romance of myself thinking that I've left an archive of that value when I die to pass on to my grandchildren, I would be very, very <laughs> happy. That is something which I'd love to actually happen to myself. But um, it's just about trying to impregnate our, our, the values of our productivity, the, the scope of what we do. Um, the diversity of projects and relationships that we're trying to create just by basically creating small repeats. So that's Toy Town Eden collection. Mm -hmm. Various different collaborations working within the collections as well. Oh, there, was a Honda, there was a Honda thing there as well. We did a Honda car. Um, okay, so <coughs> I'm going to have a bit of a break now. Okay. Well, this... Um after, like Mark was saying, we started to kind of um, question the format of catwalking as a fashion house. It's, um, I guess it was a very easy format for the old system, where people, the only selected journalists are invited to see preview. Now everything is available. What, what, what's the point of doing this um, expensive format of showing? And then everybody does it, in, in and out, um, expensive. Um, we haven't come to the conclusion what we're going to do kind of for the rest of our life, but um, this is the, kind of one of the solutions that we collaborated with the animators. Um, one, the collection Autumn, Winter, 11, 12, was called Athens Fantastic, which is, a, again, that sort of quite Disney-esque um, magical thing of when the human soul go to sleep, something happens in the attic, that we uh, used our kind of patterns to uh, create that sort of a Disney kind of fantasy land here.
being very, very analog in the studio, but realizing there's a digital world to reach out there. And we're still working on that now. Um, so this takes you into what's actually in shops at the moment. Um, so this is the Cute Boys prints, and the collection's called In Shape. And then, this is not in the shops just at the moment. <laughs> this is being made at the moment. So therefore, um, again, it's like just our flights are fancy. So we do fashion, but then uh, there's, there's some, some things happen within fashion, with digital fashion, that people are taking photographs of pots and putting them on dresses. Why can't you leave pots be pots? Um, and so this is working with one of the oldest, uh, Moorcroft, one of the oldest uh, hand makers in Stoke-on-Trent. So we went to the, to the base of craft potting um, and one of maybe very few artisans working within their, 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 their archive and their aesthetics and we've got now a collection of our pots within it. Um, it was for an exhibition which was celebrating our 20th anniversary sort of, sort of. Uh, we just use it as an excuse to put some things together. Um, I don't particularly like to celebrate because I'd like to have 20 more years on for my company and celebrate when I die. Um, the, the thing with getting this craft, hand, working with our prints, understanding technique and the idea of foraging for relationships and having mutual beneficial platforms. Um, Moorcroft never had a, a fashion show, or I never mean in that arena. We've never had the chance to go to a kiln and see how things come out of a kiln and through the processes. So the beauty of, of making, equal to how we're working now in Iceland with Vipleon Stottir, um, it's, um, we're going to go down and meet the master Nitta on Friday and we're going to understand and we're going to see factories, we're going to see real working people um, and that's, that's, that's the pleasure of our work. We're lucky to play within that arena. Um, with one of these, all these pots had a, had a voice. Uh, we, have, we have a music sonic director. That always, if, if for the exhibition, yeah, not, not generally. Well, you can buy the voice if you want. But it's, um, so therefore, the, the next pot is... Um, the, the, a lot of this is a, com a combination of Moorcroft and us together as a collaboration. The next pot, which is the daffodils, which is a new design which they put in their archive, which is we generated for Moorcroft. Um, and for the exhibition, these, because I'm from Wales, um, Wack actually wrote um, a little screenplay daffodils for Daffodils are symbol flowers for Wales in the UK. Thank you. And so oh, do sorry. you. You always look... We've got a malfunction. Excuse me. Those daffodils are talking about um, just life of being ornament, whether it's a uh, value. You look so pretty today. Why, thank you. And so, so do you. The, the, you the, it was coming from the pot within the exhibition. Oh, stop it. You were making me blush. And you know if I go pink in the face, I won't be a daffodil. Well, that's a terrifying thought. Someone painted us as pretty daffodils in a famous pottery house, petal by petal, leaf by leaf, all by hand. You do realise we are the chosen daffodils. What an honour. But wait, why is it? Why would anyone paint daffodils on a vase? You know why. Why? Because we are pretty. Is that it? Yes, it is. Why else? But is it a vase for holding real flowers? If they are in it and we are on it, wouldn't that be too much of this pretty flower thing? No, silly. We are on it so the people don't need to put real flowers in it. Make sense? We are called ornament. Ornament. Yes, ornament. And wipe that disapproving look on your face away. But ornament doesn't make us sound important. Ornaments don't have function. Not even holding flowers. You want a function now? Listen, we don't have a function, per se. That's the whole point. We don't do anything apart from sitting pretty on a mantelpiece or in a glass cabinet, wherever we're wanted. Mind you, I have a friend, Rose, who is printed on a toaster. Such a hard-working girl she is. Heavens! Looking pretty while toasting bread. With all the heat. Yeah, I know. But anyway, where was I? Oh yeah, we don't do anything, that's right. But the amazing thing is that people fall in love with us, admire us unconditionally and get the urge to own us because... That's enough. <laughs> it goes on a bit. You can see it on YouTube. Um, so this is the exhibition. We also worked with um, uh, one of the... There's only one lace mill left in the UK, which is of a certain width. Um, it's a, it's a, a Nottingham lace mill, which is now situated in Perth in Scotland. Again, a traditional craft maker, beautiful, small, sort of 17, 18 people run business. 
And it's just about rejuvenating lace. The exhibition was in one of the best um, interior design stores, Arrow, which is a family friend. We've done rugs with them for a while. Um, and it's just to kind of look at these makers and give them life through our, our archive and our enthusiasm and put them on another platform. And I do think there's, there, there is life for lace. It's like we, we, we want to sort of sometimes close sort of a bit, bit of security or a little bit of some hidden things behind windows rather than all this openness. So therefore, I do think there's a time for lace again. We had the rugs, which are with Aaron, the lace for windows. They go, all, everything goes together. We had the Clark shoes. We um, spent most of our, pro, our, <coughs> our sponsorship on that, that animatronics. It went around for two months. and did about 200 miles with a pair of Clark shoes on. And the, the, the tour is from Glastonbury, where Clark's is situated. Um, obviously, the Moorcroft rugs, which are all speaking. And then um, shapes. Somebody else mentioned shapes earlier on, wasn't it? Squares and... Me. No, somebody else, squares, oh, I think it was, okay. there were squares and okay. circles and things. Um, so that's, that's the basis of a lot of our work. Um, as well as all of that stuff, um, we've, been, well, we've done design directorships throughout our career, which allows us to pay for the <coughs> rent of the studio. Um, this is a deadline city. Yeah, no, exactly. This is the one that we always leave to the last minute. Um, this is, we, we've done Ratti in Italy, we've done Laura Ashley, um, Cash Around them, and this is Laura Ashley now. Um, so we're doing a, a younger label for Laura Ashley for the Asian market, um, and this is the delivery that we do, and then we do specs, and then we look at the, the clothes when they're manufactured, and we just sit down inside. So this is kind of bread and butter work. So that's how we deliver it, and we make the prints. So that's a month-by-month -month delivery that we have to do within the studio. And this is bringing smack up to date. This collection is still selling. Just, we've just come back from Paris Fashion Week. It's on, <coughs> it's on in the sales room and showroom and, and gallery in Tokyo at the moment, which is called Portrait Salon. Yeah. I think this, to, um, the con to, this is, is the kind of uh, one of the last things that you, we're going to show you. Portrait Salon, maybe just I can kind of link it back to how the, um, this talk started. I think I started talking this kind of magical moment as a doer, as a creator. It's the, your intimate time with your pen and your sketchbook, just thinking or not thinking or just panicking, not any, nothing's coming. <laughs> um, but I think that can relate to perhaps whether you're a famous or not famous, the sort of situation of a painter and a sitter. That's a very transient moment, a live moment. But when the painter puts his brush down, the image has its own life of maybe the world is not correct, but you know, the commodity the, the, that's a different life is just public domain, which is slightly kind of shared with uh, what we do that um, as a product designer pattern. I, they, they're like my kids. Um, some of them are not perfect, and I still kind of pick on some of the flash pattern, oh my god, that's a bit wobbly and really irritates the hell out of me. But they're like kids, but once that becomes a product, it becomes an immortal image as a commodity. I think that's the, 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 the reason why I chose the uh, title of Portrait, Portrait Salon this season. Um, so we'll, I'll just finish off and just this... Um we find very nice people, and a young kid from Korea came up to us and showed us this work without knowing us. It's a very short animation. That's fantastic came from him. Um, and he shocked us amazingly by his intensity of, of spending months with our work without us knowing. Um, and I think that's a bit of magic as far as I'm concerned, the amount of people and beautiful relationships we've created.